the lecture of the conference was it, it's um, an attempt to think um, the figure of the suicide bomber, not the individual suicide bomber, but the figure of the suicide bomber as a social symptom. Um, and one of the reasons for doing this is the literature about suicide bombing is extraordinarily weak, uh, most of the literature. Um, it's, it's either empirical, um, so it interviews people and it assumes you can take at face value what the people say, or it does uh, something that political science thinks it can do, which is to gather statistics and to merge the statistics to allow you to predict who's most likely to be a suicide bomber. But the problem with all of this literature is it ends up not being able either to predict or indeed um, to explain, uh, which it attempts to do, um, why it is these, this has become the signifier of opposition to uh, the dominant logics of the world in which we live. Um, I mean, statistically, there are far more acts of terror that are not about suicide bombing. So why is it that that figure, this is the question I was asking, why has that figure assumed the preponderance um, in the mediatized world that we live in? Um, and the, 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 the path that I've taken is to, is to read the suicide bomber as social symptom, um, which ironically has its origins in Lukács' the thesis on reification. Um, without actually wanting to defend Lukács. Um, and, I mean, what Lukács suggests in, in um, his account of reification is that one can begin with a small element of the social totality and what you end up with is an explanation if you can, and this is obviously following from Marx's account of fetishization. So my assumption is that if we, if we attempt to understand the suicide bomber as social symptom, rather than taking at face value what the suicide bomber says, or taking at face value what is said about the suicide bomber. What we try to understand is how that figure encapsulates some of the key political questions that we're forced to address in our era. Questions concerning um, how bodies are enclosed, um, how the relations between body, space and property is organised, um, how bodies are informationalised, such that it's almost impossible for any of us to move through space without some record of our bodies being maintained. Uh, it's impossible to cross borders without recognizing that in some sense your body has been written upon which, in ways which are abstract, which then allows you to cross those borders. And what's interesting about the suicide bomber is that figure breaks with all of that. The suicide bomber quite literally politicizes flesh in the way in which I think flesh is already politicized. Um, and we were talking earlier, I think it's not the body, it's flesh that one should speak about here. Um, but that's, the, the, that's, the, that's what I've been looking at. And the, the key then is to, to read the suicide bomber symptomatically, to look at what happens to flesh, to look at the act, to look at the representation of the act. Um, and to, in, in doing that, to then relate that to key elements of um, contemporary social dynamics. Um, and um, the, the things I'm in, interested in are enclosure, the spiritual, to go back to the last paper today, the spiritualization of flesh, um, the ways in which that is organized, distributed, um, and the extent to which the suicide bomber represents some type of act against that. Um, and I think my conclusion is, and this is debatable, that it's a form of acting out as opposed to an act. So the political question that we're then left with is what would it mean to act um, in the contemporary age? Is it possible to conceptualize the act? And do we have to go down the route of, let's say, Alain Badiou and Slavoj Žižek, who call for any, they try to theorize a the notion of the event. The event is somehow establishing a new axiomatic framework within which sub subjects can be formed. Um, or, or can we argue that, in fact, there are other forms of engaging in political acts which are not acting out, which challenge the dominant order, but which don't require the act that the suicide bomber engages in. Yeah. But so. they would still have to involve some sort of, um, some mode of engagement with this dimension that you're calling flesh. Yes. In other words, Absolutely. they would, um, and I actually think that that's one of the places where the arts, where aesthetic experience, where novels, painting, installations, all, film, I mean, has resource have resources for evoking and, in a way, in, you know, encountering this dimension of flesh yeah. without either um, 
spiritualizing it or collapsing it into uh, you know the, the genome, yeah, you know yeah. the the, um, the, bi the the biological yeah. body, and so in a certain sense, it's a kind of flesh as a certain kind of as the bearer of social pressure, social political yeah. pressures that impinge on bodily life. Yeah. Um, but can't be um, can't be fully grasped or, or conceptualized by the science the, the sciences of imminence. Yeah. Which is precisely Which is why the, 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 the sort of political science material and sociological right. material I've looked at um, always finds itself falling short. Right. Because exactly. it can't actually get right. to this question of, of, of well, of flesh. Right. Um, and of the relation between flesh and the social body, the body politics, so to speak. Right. Um, it's interesting. I mean, one of the, 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 um, the texts that also influenced me was this, fa it's this famous essay by Claude Lafour, um, the, the question of the permanence of the theological political mm -hmm. question mark. And he, um, Lafour was a student of Merleau-Ponty yeah. and he edited Merleau-Ponty's uh, posthumous writings. And in the posthumous writings, it's, it's where Merleau-Ponty evokes the notion of the flesh of the world. And in this essay, Lafour says, basically, in order to understand the, the persistence of political theology and modernity, we have to somehow think of what the political um, legibility is of the flesh of the world. And that's basically what I'm trying to do with this book, The Royal yeah. Remains. Which means I'll have to yeah. read the book in order to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so in this, you could say in the suicide bomber is somehow acting out pressures that are in a way um, in or, co or constitute this flesh. So, yeah, to constitute the flesh they that we are. That we are, yeah. 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 Well, one um, of the things that interests me though about the suicide bomber is the is the textual dimension, if you like, because very often um, suicide bombers write or, or more, yes. more properly kind of film themselves, making yeah. some kind of statement. So, so here now you have your chance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the final <laughs> statement. Is right.